Hi, I'm Chelsea of Friday Pattern Company and this is the Ilford Sew Along. This is the second video of three. The first video was all about sewing the placket, so if you're making a placket sleeved Ilford, you'll want to watch that video and have your plackets done before you start this one. This video will be all about assembling the body. So we're going to assemble the body, attach the sleeves, do the front placket, attach the collar, and then the third video will be all about pockets and buttons. So yeah, it should be fun. I hope you enjoy and yeah, happy sewing. So I have my pieces all prepped out and ready to sew. I'm just gonna show you what I've done. So I've fused all the interfacing on. I have stay stitched the neckline and clipped in at the notches. On the body and the sleeves, there are these matching dots that I have marked on the wrong side of the fabric. Um, and you'll also see that I put a piece of tape marking which side is the right side and wrong side of my fabric because they look really similar. On the back piece, I have also put a little thing to indicate wrong side, right side. There's that dot again. I've stay stitched the neckline and clipped in at the different notches. For the cup on mine, I'm gonna do a contrasting inside. So I have one cut of that, one cut of the main, and I interfaced the main cuff piece. For the collar, same thing, contrasting for the underside. So I've interfaced my main piece and then I have my contrasting piece cut. For the sleeve, I already have the placket sewn on and I've marked the right side and wrong side. And then I also have uh, on the wrong side, you'll see that I have marked the, I've trimmed the notches and I've marked the little circle marks on these that we'll use for constructing the sleeves. Because the Ilford jacket is unlined, you'll need to decide how you wanna finish your seams. And for this one, I'm going to use this double fold bias tape that's a quarter inch wide. I bought these three packs. I only ended up using two, but we'll talk a little bit more about seam allowances later. We'll get started with the collar. So take your two collar pieces and you're gonna grab the one that has interfacing on it and you're gonna press the lower curved edge, so that's that shorter one that has a notch on it, under 5 eighths of an inch, all the way across this thing. And then once you have that pressed, you're going to pin it right sides together with your other collar piece and you're gonna sew around the three edges, so the two short sides and then the lower side that is still left unfolded. And you're gonna use your 5 8 inch seam allowance. Now we're gonna clip the corners and trim away excess so we can flip this right side out. So you're gonna trim in as close as, oh, this is where my uh, scissors picked up a stowaway because they've become magnetized because they sit too close to my <laughs> magnetic pincushion. Anyway, so clip in as close to that seam in at the corners as you can, and then I'm just trimming down the seam allowance, and then I'm gonna flip it right side out and give it a press. And I just use a knitting needle to kind of poke in the corners a little bit to make them extra sharp, but be careful when you're doing this because you can't stab right through your seam. After that's done, you can just give it a good press and we're just gonna set this aside for later and work on the body next. Grab your back piece B and your front piece A and pin them right sides together at shoulder seams. And then we're just gonna stitch along that shoulder seam using our 5 8 inch seam allowance. Once you have this seam sewn, you're gonna press it open and we are going to finish this seam. So you can use a zigzag stitch or a serge stitch, whatever you want, but you'll do these two seams and then you're also going to finish the entire side seam on both sides. This is a lot of work now, but it'll save us time later on. Because I'm finishing with the bias binding, I'm not gonna be able to see my notches once that's sewn on. So I'm just on the wrong side of my fabric using chalk to mark where the notches are just so I'll be able to reference those and this is, would be unnecessary if you're using a zigzag or you're serging it in a way that you could still see your notches, but just a heads up. Here we are at the sewing machine, ready to put our bias binding on. So I, you just wrap it around the raw edge, but if you get the store-bought bias tape, one side will be slightly longer than the other. You want that longer side underneath so that you know that it's being caught in your stitch when you sew close to the edge of the bias binding. So you just wrap it around the raw edge of your fabric. You could pin this in advance, but I find it's easy to just kind of work it as I go. So 
just wrapping that and then I'm sewing just about an eighth of an inch from the edge of the bias binding and just working my way down my raw seam. This finish obviously takes longer than other finishes, but it's just gonna give it a really nice look once the jacket is all sewn up. And again, you're just gonna do these two sides of your shoulder seam and then you're gonna finish your entire side seam, making sure when you do finish your side seam that you're keeping your shoulder seam pressed open. I know you've probably had it with finishing seams, but the first step with the sleeves is to sew, to finish up the side seams and across the top and then back down the other side. You're gonna repeat for both sleeves. The process of finishing the seam on the sleeve is the same, but I just wanted to show you how I uh, deal with corners with this bias binding. So I sew right to the corner and then I stop and I'm gonna cut my thread and then I'm gonna fold the binding back over so that I get a nice little corner right there. So once you get that figured out, I actually think it's easier to flip the project and sew just like an, from an inch out back towards the corner so that I'm kind of climbing the hill rather than trying to sew down it because I find that in when I do that, my machine or my needle wants to kind of like bend it. So I am flipping it around and sewing from the other side so that I'm sewing towards the corner and then after I do that, I'm going, I can flip the project back around and sew in the other direction. Anyway, this is just how I do it. Um, I hope that that's not too confusing. I find that I have more success with this method, but yeah, dealer's choice. Do what makes you happy. You're not really gonna see this corner, so it's not super important. Here's that finished and it looks like a safety vest. <laughs> so now we're going to join the sleeve to the body. So we'll open up the body and right sides together, pin the sleeve in. We're gonna match the notches. So that double notch matches up with the back and the single notch matches up with the front. And then we also have the corresponding circle marks that need to be matched up. So I like to stick a pin right in that and then stick it in the corresponding pin on the, or circle on the body. And I use the pin so I know that they're exactly matched up and then matching up notches. And when we sew this seam, we're actually only gonna sew between the circle marks. So we're not gonna sew past them. So that pin will be a guide for you to know start and stop sewing here. So again, I'm just matching it up on the other side and then making sure everything is in place. And then we will take it over to the sewing machine. Here we are at the machine and we're just gonna start right at our little circle mark. So I'm just getting that set up right under my presser foot, lowering it, removing the pin, and then lowering the needle. So you'll start sewing and then you're gonna backstitch and then you'll sew all the way to the other circle mark, backstitch again, and repeat on the other side. Once you have that done, you're gonna fold your Ilford in half, right sides together, and match up these underarms, and we are going to sew the underarm seam. So again, you're gonna to wanna to match that circle mark with the circle mark that's on the back. So I'm using a pin again to just stab directly into it and then through the other one so that I know that they're perfectly lined up. And then you can pin the rest of the underarm in place. We're gonna sew from the, uh, the hem of the sleeve to the circle mark. And this will be the same whether you're making the boxy sleeve or the placketed sleeve. Here's that finished, and you're gonna repeat that on both sides if you haven't already. And now we are going to fold this seam allowance out towards the sleeve, and we are going to sew from the circle mark down to the hem. So we'll once again make sure that those circles are perfectly matched up and then you can pin down the rest of your side seam and then same thing as you've been doing, sew from the circle to the hem. Cool, and then there is that all finished. Once you're done with all of that, we can flip it right side out and we will get started on the front placket. To prepare for sewing our front placket and hemming the jacket, we're actually gonna do a, a bunch of pressing that 
take a little while, but we'll thank ourselves later. So the center front will be pressed under one quarter inch all the way down. And you're gonna do that on both sides. Then we're gonna press our hem edge under a quarter inch and then we're going to press it under one inch more. All these creases are gonna make hemming this jacket a breeze. So one quarter inch and then we'll press it under one inch from the raw edge. So I'm doing that, I'm just not pressing like right on top of the crease that I just made so that I don't lose it. But these are going to be helpful reference points after we finish our center front placket. Now we will fold our front placket where you're looking at the neckline edge here. You're folding it so those two notches match up. And then we're going to sew from the edge of the placket to those notches using our 5 8 inch seam allowance. And you'll backstitch when you get to the notch. Repeat that on both sides. And here is that done. Now we will sew on the bottom of our placket. So again, we are matching up these notches down here, but instead of sewing just to the notch this time, we're actually going to sew from that folded edge to the end of the placket, keeping that quarter inch pressed under. And we are going to sew on that one inch crease that we made. So from that little fold down to the edge of the placket along the one inch crease. Here is that finished. Now that that's all done, we get to see our beautiful center front placket come together. So at those neckline notches, we're just gonna clip down 5 eighths of an inch just right to that seam line. And then we're gonna pinch it and flip it right side out. And you should get a pretty nice square turn, but if not, you can give it a little poke. And then we're gonna move down to the hem of our placket. And then same deal down here, we're just gonna pinch it and flip it to get that crispy curve and hopefully your pressing will make it so that this all falls nicely into place but you're just going to want to make sure that that quarter inch is pressed under at the hem and that everything is looking nice you are going to edge stitch from the top to the bottom of your placket along that folded edge here is what that looks like finished and it's so neat and tidy i love it Make sure you repeat that on both sides and now we are going to do the hem. So most of the work is done here already because of that earlier pressing we did, but we're just gonna wrangle it all back into place and pin or clip it. And then you will just edge stitch along your hem between your plackets. And here's that done, yay. Now we're gonna pin the collar to the body. So we will match up those center back notches and then we're going to pin along the neckline. Make sure that your shoulder seams stay pressed open as you pin this in place and the edge of your collar should match up with that notch on your front placket. So these will just match up nicely. And you're just gonna sew along the neckline using your 5 8 inch seam allowance. As you can see, I have that contrasting fabric that is on the underside. So the side that you are pinning directly to your the body of your jacket is the side that will be underneath your collar. So just keep that in mind if you're also doing a contrasting underside of your collar. Okay, so here is that is done and we are just going to pull the collar up so that it that seam allowance goes inside of it and then we will just match that folded edge up just right over that seam that we made in the last step. And then we're going to edge stitch this in place. If you wanted to top stitch all the way around your collar in this step, you're more than welcome. I'm just gonna edge stitch across the bottom because I don't wanna do a ton of top stitching with this particular Ilford, but that is definitely a customization that you could add. And here that is finished. Yay, it looks like a jacket. 
This next step is for placket people only. So if you have made the placket sleeve version, you are going to grab your two cuff pieces. You're gonna press the one that you want to be underneath under 5 eighths of an inch along that top edge. And then we are going to pin these right sides together just like we did with the collar. And we're gonna sew along these three edges. Now we are going to, just like we did with the collar, Clip these corners and trim away excess and then flip this right side out and give it a nice press. And we're going to repeat with both sets of cuffs. Once you have those pressed, you will pin them to the hem of your sleeve. So right sides together, we're going to pin those in place. The folded edges match up and then you just work your way around the sleeve. Make sure your underarm seam gets pressed, uh, gets pinned with it pressed open. And then when you get to the other side, you'll just do that. And then you're gonna sew around this sleeve hem using your 5 8 inch seam allowance. This is similar to the collar construction. Here is that done. And we are just going to pull the cuff up and tuck that seam allowance into it. And then just like we did with the collar, we are going to pin that folded edge in place along the sleeve hem and then we will edge stitch it and again you have the option to kind of top stitch all the way around your cuff if that's the look that you want I'm just going to go across that sleeve hem edge and here that is finished and that's it for this week's episode episode of the Ilford jacket sew along. Next week we're going to be covering the pockets and the buttons. So the one thing I realized that isn't covered in this sew along is if you are making the boxy sleeve version you got to hem those sleeves. So to do that you will just press the sleeve hem under three quarters of an inch, press it under three quarters of an inch again, and then edge stitch and place around the sleeve hem. Anyway, uh, I hope this was helpful and I can't wait to see you again next week. Bye!